YouTube, what is good with y'all boys today? We're watching the dysfunction of Sexy Red, all right? Well, national recording artist Sexy Red, whose name is Janae Wary, drawing criticism tonight over her behavior and performance after a student rally Wednesday at Chaffetz. She got kicked out of the school for her dysfunctional behavior, and she bragged about how she was coming back around. I tried to put me out from this school. I'm coming back around. The organization involved telling First Alert 4 tonight she was never even invited. As the what? cycle of toxic behavior continues, she somehow keeps on getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, they said, did I sell my soul? Should I just tell them the truth? The question I have is, is it ever going to stop? And who's behind the machine that's pushing her? Yes, they got me in this shit. I don't know. I can't get out of it. I'm getting too much money. I'm getting too much money. Well, nah, sh I ain't gonna lie. Pulling up to school, pulling up to a kid's school uninvited is insane. Especially when you over here twerking in front of the kids. That's insane. Now, Sexy Red, a name most people by this point recognize she's currently one of the hottest female rappers in the industry has amassed a whole lot of success in a relatively short time she's in fact one of the most streamed women in hip-hop right now has received co-signs from Nicki minaj collaborated with drake and it doesn't look like things are slowing down for her anytime soon no nah, i ain't gonna say that shit right drake her and he gave her a feature Deal. We're not going to talk too much about the success of Sexy Red because it's pretty clear that she is in fact a success judging by the standards of the music industry. As long as you can garner attention, whether it's negative or positive, you will be rewarded monetarily and so will anyone who's backing you up. I do however want to talk about the dysfunction of Sexy Red because Sexy Red okay. is in fact pretty dysfunctional. I mean, Janae, nah, sh her whole premise of being a rapper is her being a January, professionally known as Sexy Red, is someone who's no stranger to backlash, as she's received a lot of criticism ever since her blow-up in early 2023. A lot of the criticism has stemmed from a wide range of things. However, the focal point of it all being the explicit content in her music and the negative influence of it. More importantly, though, I want to focus on the behavior she's exuded in a few different instances. Back in November 2023, a viral story involving Sexy Red and a teacher ended up hitting the headlines. The reason for that was this video right here and another thing that's heart-wrenching is horrifying your five-year-old daughters are asking to listen to pound town your five-year-old daughters are asking can we hear pound town i'm playing them princess tiana ba that's the parents fault right there that's the parents fault a kid shouldn't even know what pound town is that's the parents fault i gotta watch what y'all play around your kids i lay music and they are asking me can we hear pound and I'm so scared for these little girls today because this is the most insane, insane agenda push I have ever seen in my life. The video in question was of a young ballet teacher who was voicing her frustration regarding the children in her class singing along to one of her most explicit records, Pound Town, the song that catapulted her to fame. A very normal reaction from a woman whose job is to be around these young girls all day, who also knows what it's like growing up as a young girl herself. And she was seeing the negative impact Sexy Red's music was having on these young girls. Sexy Red, however, didn't agree with the teacher's criticism and quickly dismissed her comments by saying, girl, shut the hell up and play my song. The main concern the teacher had, which she brought up, was related to her not liking the idea of children being exposed to sexually provocative content. Sexy Red is someone who benefits from people consuming said content because that's the main theme in her music. The dysfunctional- See, that's the whole, that's, that's the whole problem I have with this Sexy Red shit. I say it in so many of my videos, bro. Look, check. It's not just her music, it's the message and the image she has to push out to push out her music, bro. Her label benefits from society turning freakier. Have y'all noticed that ever since Sexy Red has come out, every everything in society has just gotten freakier? Like, literally. And I'm not saying it's just because of her, but yo, people like Sexy Red, they start trends. Nigga. Ever since 2022, she popped off. It feels like society is just getting freakier and freakier. Literally. It just feels like it. Because the freakier society is, the better she does. 
And that's what her label is trying to push out. That's what these other female rappers are seeing. And now they're trying to make society freakier too. And it's just pushing out a negative stigma. This is a, a ne- this is another reason why I'm trying to go sell a bit, bro. I blame I blame one cloud nine. Why? The aspect of this, of course, being her lack of willingness to acknowledge the fact that her music is inappropriate for little girls or children in general. This entire story resulted in a wave of backlash for Sexy Red. My thumbnails, bro. I don't, my thumbnails aren't even bad no more, bro. It, it, they aren't really. I'm gonna be real. My thumbnail, like, if my thumbnail is freaky, it's because it was the, it's because it's related to the video. That's literally it. They used to be, yeah, we passed that, bro. But it's not as bad no more, bro. I could really, cause I grew up, and you feel me, realize my ways. And on the other end, support for the teacher. As a lot of people were calling out her ignorance, now it didn't result in much as Sexy Red still continues to climb in the industry. Schools across the St. Louis region were unexpectedly exposed to an uninvited. The only thing no, that normal that's normal is your gaming channel, nigga. My main channel isn't freaky either. It's just wild. My thumbnails are just wild over there. They're not freaky. Two girls climbing a big plaque black pole. <laughs> okay, that's funny, bro. That's funny. That's funny, bro. Did performance in the parking lot by a rapper. So look, so this school put me. I came up here, got you. Try to talk to the kids, get in the water, they're gonna pull me off. Try to talk Try to, to the like, kids, please. what? Bro, I wouldn't, yo, if I'm a parent, I would never want Sexy Red coming to my school, bro. I'm sorry, like, to my kids' school? Fuck no, man. Watch this. My job hard. Every day I'm fighting for my life. A few weeks ago, Sexy Red made headlines after she got kicked out of a school in her hometown of St. Louis for smelling like marijuana, something she ended up responding to after the fact. As you could hear, she wasn't too happy about not being allowed to talk to the kids in the school. Whether or not she was actually booked to be there or not, nobody really knows. But if she was, that would obviously be way worse. Because why are you smelling like marijuana when you know that you're about to speak to a bunch of little children. I wish I knew the answer yeah, to that, that question, crazy. but from her perspective, she didn't do anything wrong. What ended up happening in the end is Sexy Red pulled up to the front of the school with her car and turned up with the kids despite the fact that they didn't want her on the property. Which that in itself... Is that not crazy? Like, as an artist... You're playing this degenerate music to, like, teenagers in high school? Is that not crazy to you? What? Is an issue. The kind of thing any average human being would have faced real repercussions for. I guess when you're famous, rich, and poppin', consequences don't come with the package, right? Now, this is standard behavior for Sexy Red, though. In all the controversy she's been involved in, Sexy Red has always been very dismissive of any criticism that points out her dysfunction. The most concerning thing here is that a lot of these stories involve children and how her actions might be affecting them negatively. However, it seems like she doesn't care all that much about the negative influence she's having on them. The reason behind why that's the case? Well, Sexy Red has been getting heavily rewarded for showing up in this way. Where is the incentive for her to actually change her ways? The 4C hair comments. Sexy Red recently decided to make a post on her Instagram showing off her hair. In the midst of showing off her hair, she indirectly made some disparaging comments about 4C hair. That's the hair type that most black people naturally have, for anyone who doesn't know. You carpet, hair, beanie, neck, ho, could never. Sexy Red said. What the hell? What? as she was showing off her straightened hair in this video. Most of us know that straight hair is synonymous with white hair, which is the opposite of 4C hair. Sexy Red got a lot of backlash for this, which I think was justified. She ended up responding to the backlash by saying, I F with people with carpet hair. They're cool, but if you're talking smack, I'ma call you carpet hair. Nothing against my fellow 4C hoochies. Not the best response. Nigga. Isn't your carpet, isn't your hair 4C? So you're insulting yourself. What the hell? Response, especially from a PR standpoint. But then again, this is kind of normal for Sexy Red. So I wouldn't say that this is surprising at all. I mean, here's a woman who literally became famous by leaning into an extremely negative stereotype of black people, more specifically, black women. I will say that it is paradoxical how she literally insulted the bulk of her audience with her comments. It's almost like she knows that there's no repercussions to her words. 
Speaking of dysfunction, let's talk about one of the more viral moments involving Sexy Red, which Nigga, involves the yo, infamous Chad, did tape that went viral back in October. Chat, did y'all see that leak? One thing, I'm, you, you know my prediction with that? I think she leaked it herself. It got her buzz. Plus, she, everybody knows she's a hoe, so why would they care? I for, for sure think she leaked it herself. Last year, Sexy Red went viral after a video surfaced on the internet. Now, the video didn't surface by itself, which is the catch here. She herself ended up posting it on her Instagram story. After what? Nigga, she did? Bro, I thought someone, somebody actually leaked it. No, that's a post. That's weird. Minutes, she deleted it, but it was already too late at that point. The video spread all over the internet, and her not-so-pink coochie went viral. Right after this, she responded to the video going viral on Twitter by saying, I'm so heartbroken. Anybody that know me knows I wouldn't do no goofy stuff like that. Sexy Red was insinuating that the tape had gotten leaked accidentally. Her explanation was, the video was saved on my phone. I was on my Instagram when I ended up throwing my phone, and that's how it got uploaded. That's a fucking lie. She did that shit. He posted that shit, bro. She posted that shit for views and club. And then she was trying to act like the, vic the uh, victim. Bro, her label told her to do that, bro. I think anyone with a functioning brain understands that this tape leaking was, of course, intentional. It was just one of the pieces that was needed in order for her to continue rising, and it worked. A lot of new people discovered her as a result of it, which was a part of the plan. The visual aspect, i.e. her bare coochie being all out like this, is very consistent with how she's actually being marketed. The overall theme of her music, of course, being S-E-X. That's what Red sells. It's literally a part of her stage name, so it doesn't take a genius to figure that out. Keep in mind that her biggest song, Pound Town, has a line about what color her poom poom is. So when people have visual evidence they can connect to that and her poom poom ends up not being so pink what do you think that's going to lead to <laughs> obviously a viral moment and that's exactly what happened mission accomplished the most disturbing part about the story is the fact that a large percentage of her audience consists of little children specifically young black girls her attaching her name to this tape and leaking this is sad bro black community we got to do better that's sad like why is she like the main you feel me benefactor of our race. I'm off in a lot. This corner is good as fuck. And it like this means that they most likely saw it. Is it her responsibility to raise these little girls? Absolutely not. But as a child, most of us have looked up to some kind of public figure, whether that be a musician, actor, or whatever. Imagine your role model deliberately leaking their own private parts for the entire world to see just to promote themselves. <laughs> and pretending like that's not what they did. What kind of message does that send to the young minds of the world who are watching this go down? Now, I refuse to draw a line after this tape because she was already no muy bueno before this, but it is kind of sad how an artist can get so heavily rewarded for something so vile. This is why Sexy Red is in the position she's in, by the way. Being willing to promote yourself as a public figure in ways that are degenerate is the cheat code. The more of your ethics, morals, and values you're willing to strip away for the attention is the more benefit you're gonna see. I didn't create the industry, that's just how it is. Before we continue talking, let's go over the archetype of a sexy red, because this is one of the most important aspects of why she was chosen. I did say chosen, and type of a sexy red, because this is one of the most important. This might be the worst image I've ever seen of her. This is so nasty. I I don't like calling women ugly. That's a lie, nigga. She's ugly as shit important aspects of why she was chosen. I did say chosen, and that's exactly what it is. For anyone who still hasn't realized this, Sexy Red was handpicked by the industry to play the position she's currently in. You need to understand that nothing, especially as it relates to the music industry, a billion dollar industry, happens by mistake. Here we have one of the most viral artists on the internet climbing by the second. She's not the best rapper, doesn't make the- I've been telling niggas this. They chose her. They chose to promote her, bro. Bag her face, Jamaican style is crazy. They chose her for a reason, bruh. Because she doesn't look that good. But she's not but ugly. She just doesn't look that good. So, niggas can find a way to hate on her. But niggas can find a way to love her. This creates controversy, which blows her up even more. And then she's talking about some crazy ass shit. This is why I believe Sexy Red sold her soul. And that's what I call selling her soul. Because what she did, she sold all her morals, her whole future, her kids' future, to make money. She even said that shit, man. 
best music, although she has a couple bangers, I must say. She's kind of trashy. That corn buttered, you know it is. By her own standards, doesn't portray herself as the most morally inclined human being. Despite all this, she continues to climb. And the question is, how is this level of rise even possible? That's a question a lot of people are asking as it relates to Sexy Red. There's a lot of angles we could look at this from, whether it's the marketing aspect of her personality. A lot of money has been dumped into promoting Sexy Red. At this point, it's definitely in the millions, which is crazy to say because she still is a fairly new artist. But one of the answers to that question, I'd argue the most important one is this. Sexy Red is a- I guarantee you, the people who put her in that position is a bunch of old racist white men who are trying to destroy the black community. I'm telling you, what you think BET is, bro? Why do you think all these black rappers and shit be talking about gangs, drugs, killing niggas? Why do you think so? It's degenerate culture. But the white rappers, the white people, the white artists, they don't be talking about that shit. They be talking about drinking beers and having fun. We be talking about killing niggas. Girl, uh, fe female, uh, white female artists, they be talking about sunshines and rainbows and shit and living their life. Black female artists be talking about getting fucked and becoming baby mamas and money. What? No other race on the planet talks about different type of things. Everybody else talks about having a good time. We talk about fucking struggle and killing niggas. You mean whores? Like, I ain't gonna lie. Y'all might not think so. This semen retention, I mean, this uh celibacy, it is making me, uh, it, it, it is opening my eyes a lot. I'm not gonna lie. I was wilding out the last video, right? But now, right now, I'm low-key getting post-nut clarity, and I didn't even nut. Because that last video was wild as fuck. This is low-key kind of like, you feel me, opening my eyes back up, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. Shut up, bro. My fault, twin. Walking character of a very big group of people. Black women. The word character derives from the Italian word caricare, which means to load or exaggerate. The English definition is as follows. The art of making, drawing, or written spoken description of someone that usually makes them look silly by making part of their appearance or character more noticeable than it really is. Annibale Caracci, who was an influential Italian painter of the late 16th and 17th century, played a crucial part in the development of Western art. Alongside his brother, Agostino, Annibale is credited with initializing the inclusion of characters in modern day art. Nigga, character how the fuck am I getting a history lesson, bro? I ain't gonna lie, this video is good as fuck though. Hers have since then became a very You know it's good when I'm not yapping. Mostly as propaganda by the media to either present a false image of a big group of people or to condemn said people by displaying them as foolish. In 1938, the Nazis organized a public exhibition in Dusseldorf, Germany. The exhibition in question included a poster Dusseldorf. displaying a cartoon character of an African-American male playing on a saxophone. Damn, nigga, they hated us too phone with the star of david on his tuxedo this was their attempt at vilifying jazz music which they deemed as n-i-g-g-r music we may live in 2024 where the world is more inclusive than it used to be but the subtle use of characters especially in the music industry signals that we still have a lot of work to do in a world let me get a bite here you go twin i'm off in a lot i'm about to start eating corn more bro this shit busts especially on stream dominated by media propaganda that shapes our perspective of things but especially people sexy red is being used as a tool by the music industry to further propagate a negative view of black people as a whole but especially black women the black woman has since the dawn of time undoubtedly been the most disrespected woman on the planet going all the way back to the jezebel stereotype which was a social construct that was created during slavery the black woman was portrayed as a hypersexual and Nigga. sexually voracious woman whose value to society was purely based on her sexuality and her and that's how we're being viewed now which is sad it's crazy, but it's sad. That's how we're being viewed now. Yo, when you, I'm gonna I'm make a video really soon talking about the freakiest racist or ranking races on freak tier list. Unfortunately, black women are gonna, have, I mean, unfortunately, black people are gonna have to be at the top of the list, bro. I'm gonna just let y'all know that right now. Because, bro, for some reason, black women are just giving this, you feel me? horny ass stereotype and we and they're just living up to this shit bro we are black people in general are just li living up to this shit man even me including me for show me <laughs> really me i ain't gonna lie i'm a big factor of it i ain't gonna hold you i need to do better but look i feel like bro we gotta you feel me turning around man sometime hopefully Bye. Latina, yeah, they're finna be up there too. They're number two. I'm not gonna lie. I'm just letting y'all niggas know. That preconceived notion had a lot of drawbacks. This stereotype, among many things, justified a wide range of abuse against the black woman's body. Hip hop, a black art form that was started with the sole purpose to empower.
Bye, I tried staying, but I need a nut break. Yo, RC, what the fuck is wrong with you, bro? For young black Americans has unfortunately been used by the music industry as a tool to further propagate that very thing black women and the good black men have been fighting against. Sexy Red herself is that walking stereotype. The overall theme in her music is consistent with the same ideas the Jezebel stereotype promotes. While Sexy Red's virality keeps getting more intense by the second, and the industry that propped her up continues to profit off of a false stereotype she's pushing, an entire community of people get wrongfully judged for the actions of one person. Black people are not a monolith though, so what am I actually even saying right now? The question here is- Is that Blackie? Is this Blackie? I have never seen this nigga in real life. His dreads look immaculate. Oh my God. Yo, they look beautiful. What? No, his braids look beautiful, bro. Oh me. And whether or not we are the same because black people are not all the same. If they haven't told you, we're not all the same. We're different as human beings from different backgrounds to different personalities to different hobbies to different interests and all the other intricacies that comes with this thing called the complexity of being a human being. That is not the concern here. The concern, however, Chad, I th yo, Chad, I might be narcissistic. I might be my uh, uh, Chad, I might be being narcissistic and shit, but I feel like I started the uh, whole you know, face to the camera thing. I feel like I kind of you feel me pioneered that, so let's clap it up for me real quick. <laughs> Huh. You feel me? I, I feel like I started this whole little trend now. Now everybody wants to show their face and be confident and shit, man. I feel like I started that shit, man. I don't know, man. Is that mainstream media has portrayed... You're actually a narcissist? Get out? No, be quiet? Damn. Yes. As a monolith. I never blame individual people for falling into this trap. However, I do blame the larger system, which is compiled by individuals for broadcasting one aspect of an entire group of people. Sexy Red is not only directly but openly contributing to that negative view of her own kind in a way that I honestly think is uh disgusting. However, Red Wait, is- Wait, y'all think they fake? In a way that I honestly think is- I, Nah, he, what I think it is, bro, I don't think they fake. I think they're just braids. I think he just got them done because they are stiff as fuck. But it looks like he just got them done. I don't think they're fake though. It's uh, disgusting. However, Red is an openly trash and ratchet chick from the hood who became rich and famous by validating a false and negative stereotype of her own people. A negative stereotype. Hey gang, you gotta take the mic off your shirt though. I used to do that too, my audio sounded ass. Those mics are only good when they're face to face with you. You gotta have them like up close to your face. Which black women have been fighting against for centuries. And by the way, she's obviously no different from a lot of the other women in the game. The only difference is that Sexy Red is the one who's in the focal point at this very moment. Now, do I think it takes an immoral I ain't gonna lie, Lotto, uh, JT, shit, now Glorilla, shit, every fucking female in the game, they be doing the same thing now because the Sexy Red didn't and it worked. And that's the whole, you feel me, problem with this whole thing, bro. Sexy Red started the trend, bro. And now, now all these females are just getting worse and horny. Nigga, why was there a video of Meg Thee Stallion with her bare ass out? Bro, why did Meg Thee Stallion have a music video where she was butt-ass naked in a pool and you could see her all of her ass and booty cheeks? That's crazy. Nigga, that's insane. Imagine if a white woman did that, bro. Nigga, the whole white community would declaim her that instant. Us black people, we didn't even talk about it, nigga. All we was talking about... <laughs> Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like, bro, that's that's crazy. Is that not crazy? Is that not crazy? I I, I know I'm a horny ass nigga too. But nigga, the first thing when I seen that, uh, her ass poking at the pool, I was like, nigga, put some clothes on, bro. Like, what the hell? Like, come on, bro. Like, some things just need to be left to the imagination. Person being put in this type of position, if you will, who's willing to promote oneself in this way. Yes, but I also recognize that it's not her job to project anything other than what she actually is, which is why there's a tiny, tiny part of me that doesn't blame her. It's a tiny part. After all, for Sexy Red to thrive, there has to be a demand from the market. On top of that, there has to be someone who's willing to bet on her. White men. Now, this is when we get to the strain. This, 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 this is, I just, I literally just said this. That's what this is. White men are behind this, bro. White men are the reason why, you feel me? White old racist men, the heads of these uh, record labels is the only reason why this shit is happening. They're trying to destroy the black community. 
change side of wait a white woman do do that let me show you an iggy azalea video because i knew one nigga was finna god damn bro i knew no, i'm not gonna lie I, I gotta keep that tab i'm not finna lie look i knew somebody was gonna say this i'm gonna show you an iggy azalea video and i'm gonna show you five seconds of a uh random black artist you can pick whatever artist y'all want and i'm gonna show you the difference i'm gonna go to iggy azalea's most popular video too and i'm gonna just show you the difference because she be doing the same thing but it's nowhere near the, to the level of how black artists be doing it. And plus, white men, white people, they don't claim Iggy Azalea. I don't think if y'all know that shit. Uh, I don't want to hear her trash music. I'm not from the lobby. I'm just going to put this shit on mute. Uh, this is how she dressed. This is also how she dressed. Now, yeah, you can argue this video set in high school, but if this was a sexy red video or a JT video, she'd be wearing a crop top with booty shorts on or a super uptight skirt. Now, let's go to a different video because I'm not going to listen to this bullshit. Ass. Let's go to this because she got skin showing in this video. She has skin again. Mind you, white people don't claim her. They don't claim her. All right. Oh, this is a lyric video. Why the fuck? Okay, let's go to this. Uh, look, it happened. Tiger in this video is crazy. All right, now this 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 is crazy. Again, why people don't claim her though? This is crazy. But let's let's keep on watching the video. This is also crazy. This is crazy too. But still, I can. Let's just go to a r random black rap uh, females artist video. Who do y'all want me to pick? Who do y'all want me to pick? Let's go to Cole, Cole Ray. Let's just go to her newest video. Could it make it 30 seconds? Random ass video. If I kept the plane, I would have got banned. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Her bare ass cheeks. She doesn't even have a fat ass. Her bare ass cheeks are out in this video. Maybe I picked a bad example. Nigga, this is probably one of the better examples you could have picked. If I would have picked SZA, I would have seen her whole body. Her titties out and everything. Like, bro, I'm telling you, bro. You, it, It's literally every single black artist you see. It's sad. Because a lot of the, yo, a lot of these artists are actually good, but they, they're sex, they be getting exploited for sex, and it pisses me off. Koyla Ray can actually make good music when she puts her heart, mind to it, bro. Self, bro, self-love, still one of the better songs I've listened to in my days. It has a certain vibe. SZA too. SZA does not have to do, bro, SZA be making so, some immaculate ass music. Why am I seeing her ass everywhere, though? We go, so we scroll to her Instagram, we see her bare naked body. Can we not just appreciate her good music? Like, bro, it pisses me off. And it's just like, bro, and I know it, it, it it's like, damn, and then you see, you be seeing Taylor Swift fully clothed. You be seeing fucking, uh, what's another white artist? I don't know them white artists. Oh, uh, fuck. I don't know. Give me another example, because this is probably going to be a clip. Uh, Ariana Grande, fully clothed. Now, she shows skin, but it's not this much. Sabrina Carpenter. We'll go to Sabrina Carpenter's new video. And she's been the wilder of, uh, of, the, of the new white artist, man. I heard her new video was wild on a white artist scale, though. Let's go to her newest video. Let's go to her newest video. Let's scroll. Because I heard her shit wild for a white artist. Fully clothed. Oh my. She got my baby in there too. Jenna Ortega. Fully clothed. This is the most sexual scene so far. And SZA makes better music than her. SZA makes way better. Yo, you can't tell me a Sabrina Carpenter song is better than a SZA song. Like, let's be real. You can't tell me that. You can't tell me that foolishness. You can't tell me Sabrina Carpenter has made anything better than self-love. You can't tell me that bullshit. 
Yet, Sabrina Carpenter is not showing any parts of her, is barely showing skin. Hell, she even kissed an, uh, she even kissed General Ortega in this video, which is still kind of sexual, but it's nowhere near as bad as showing your whole fucking buddy, boop, buddy, uh, fucking body on a music video that only gets one million views. What the hell? You can't, you can't name one Sabrina Carpenter song that's better than SZA, any SZA song. Don't lie to me, bro. You can't. But yeah, SZA got to be showing her body and shit. But Sabrina Carpenter can just, you feel me, do her thing. And I'm telling you, it's the only difference is labels want to market Sabrina C Carpenter as an innocent young white girl that makes good music. And they want to market, but they want to market SZA as a black whore who makes good music. That's the only difference. They, if they marketed the SZA the way that Sabrina Carpenter has been marketed, she will still be successful. She will probably be more successful. It makes no sense. And I see them doing this to Coco Jones, bro. I, I see it happening to Coco Jones. And that's going to kill me because she's a Nashville native. Because please, Coco makes such good music. We don't need her showing body and shit, man. Keep her fully clothed, bro. Because I'm already knowing... Bro... I'm already knowing that's what they finna start doing. They haven't... See, it's already beginning, bro. Yep, it's already beginning, bro. It's already beginning, bro. It's already beginning. And Coco ha makes good-ass music. There is no reason why she should be showing skin. Marking her like Sabrina Carpenter, she goes way farther. She makes good music. She doesn't, you, yo, black women, black artists, you don't gotta show skin to be good. Please stop doing it. Just make good music, man. Just make good music. Like, bro, they do, but it's just like these record labels don't want to promote them, bro. Unless they're showing body and it's feeding into an agenda, bro. And I hate that shit for them. Pink Panthers is an exception. Pink Panthers doesn't have an American label, I don't think. Let me check. And plus, Pink Panther is didn't blow up because of her label she blew up because her music was just different and good let me check but i'm i'm telling you once the view once the views start dropping off you're gonna see her taking off more clothes now she's been holding true to her morals let me see what label she's signed to she's been holding true to her morals and i applaud her for that but i'm telling you bro that label start gonna start pressuring her bro let me see what label she's signed to Yeah, she's not signed to uh, Columbia or Uni Universal. Now, I don't know if this is under Universal, but this is a European uh, label. So yeah, they're not they're not uh, they're not going for that shit, bro. They're marketing her like a white girl, thankfully. But look, it's just sad, bro. It's sad of how American labels are treating these artists, bro. It's really sad. But I don't think Pink Panther is going to show skin, bro. She doesn't have, like, Columbia or Universal. Those are the record labels that be doing that shit, by the way. Thank God. My girl, Riri, Riri. Yo, Rihanna used to do that shit, too, bro. She ain't exempt. Rihanna is a prime example of you, like, bro. Rihanna has not Bro, Rihanna. It's sad what they did to Rihanna, bro. I ain't going to lie. Because she has an amazing voice. She don't. She didn't not. She did not have to show her skin, too. Uh, it's crazy of the industry because here's the thing for sexy red to be on such an elevated platform she has to have a stable foundation that's allowing her to maintain balance in the game she can't do that herself let's just say that there's a slew of highly powerful people in the music industry who are heavily invested in her success now those people won't be named because um i i can't physically point them out even so. if i could i'm actually not sure if um i heavily invested in Please don't. Mm. Her success. Now those people won't be named because um, I I can't physically point them out. Even if I could, I'm actually not sure. It's there. That's what I was checking for. Please, yo, Palerphone or whatever you're talking about, whatever that record label is. Please, please leave Pink Panthers alone, bro. When she eventually falls off, just let her fall off, bro. I'm not trying to, bro, I'm honestly, bro, I love Pink Panthers. I want her to be a family beat. And one black woman, don't show her body. We need more of that in the black community, bro. 
But I, I, I was making the connection, bro. It's there. I ain't gonna lie. If I would, because your boy is trying to see another day. It is what it is. Don't hate the player. Hate the corrupt game that controls everything. When it comes to how the music industry is set up and the powers that be, this is usually how everything operates. It's very similar to the puppeteer marionette dynamic. Something Denzel Curry showcased in a very bold and blatant fashion on his song, Cloud Cobain. In other words, just like how a puppeteer would control an object through pulling the strings necessary in order to create movement, that same Isn't Denzel Curry uh, independent? Performance can be seen in the music industry. However, it's way more subtle than you would think. There's always someone who's controlling what's being televised and Sexy Red is the actor who's being used to tell that vision. I thought a cross would burn Sexy Red skin. Yeah, I was very surprised that she wore a cross. I'm not gonna lie. Her, la her label's gonna tell her to take that shit off though. Because they're gonna make her uh, wear an upside down cross or some shit. Ne next thing you know. Television. Television. This person or entity has enough influence to govern what the different channels on the network are allowed to broadcast. The word broadcast derives from widely spreading seeds over a large area when planting. Now the word is used to describe sending out programs through radio or television. How that plays out in the music industry is, imagine the major record labels as these channels and the different channels all have separate agendas. However, they're all meant to serve the program that's set by the network, i.e. the corporations. Bro. If I did a video like this, I ain't gonna lie, I would go deep into this shit. Because this topic is very intriguing to me, bro. I'm not finna lie. The video is just getting, this video is getting good. I'm not gonna hold you. Tell a vision or television has been around as entertainment for human beings for decades and decades. The first electronic television was successfully demonstrated in San Francisco on September 7, 1927. This Clash, should I start selling magic brownies at school? I have my recipe near uh, perfect? No, don't do that shit. I'm telling you right now, don't do that shit. Listen to me, don't do that shit. What you should do, look, if you start selling them shits at school, you're gonna get caught, you're gonna get packed up to school. Because it's going to be that one nigga who eats the whole brownie like a dumbass who never smoked, ate, or anything and starts, to, and starts straight up ODing in school. They check through his bag and they find a fucking brownie wrapper. I'm telling you, you will be cooked because he will snitch. All right? He'll, he'll be talking about who gave it who gave it to you, whatever. <clears throat> what I would do, find five to ten niggas that participate in the brownie eating shit. You sell it to them off campus through somebody else, like a grown ass nigga. You get a grown ass nigga, he'll take a little commission, and he sell it for you, so you will never get caught up. All right, because they go, because if they go to that grown ass nigga, that nigga, you feel me? He gonna act like he don't, he don't know what, what the fuck going on, bro. But if they go to you, they gonna believe that shit. I'm telling you right now. Did I just tell? <laughs> did I just tell y'all niggas how to fucking sell drugs? God damn, I'm a bad influence. All right system was designed by a fellow Farnsworth, who at the age of 15 years old had worked out the principle of the image dissector. A few years later, at the age of 21, he finally concluded a working version of this device we call a television. Fellow hoped television would help families and communities share stories, become less ignorant of each other, and even lead world peace. Ironically enough, Philo himself didn't allow his children to watch TV. There's nothing on it worthwhile, and we're not gonna watch it in this household, and I don't want it in your intellectual diet. You deaf did something like that? I had a pass, bro. Philo was quoted saying, Despite the entertainment factor of this box we call a television, whether or not television changes the structure of one's consciousness has been speculated since it was introduced to the world. Television viewing, along with the act of listening to music, produces an alpha brainwave pattern state. Alpha is associated with a relaxed and attentive condition, which further supports the notion that television is a low consciousness activity. Increasing alpha brainwaves is generally considered safe and beneficial for most people. How much you make? What you talking about, twin? I ain't do shit. Snitch ass nigga. <laughs> nah, bro. That was in the past, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I don't do that shit. And again, it wasn't me selling it. Just keep it real. It wasn't me selling it. <laughs> At all. <laughs> it wasn't me. But a nigga I know, shit. That nigga made bank off commissions. <laughs> that nigga made bank off commissions. That's all I'm finna say. Cool. However, too much of it has been proven to lead to drowsiness, 
daydreaming, or lack of focus. This is an aspect that's not very talked about, especially as it relates to music. Music has for a very long time been used as a form of hypnosis or mind control, if you will. Hearing your favorite song at the right time at the right frequency will naturally put you in a state of trance. Not something that's inherently bad unless the content being fed into your subconscious mind is of a lower frequency, something the late XXX Tentacion famously spoke about before he died. What's the point of music? It's not always to have fun. It's not always to have fun. Sometimes it's to help people find themselves because music is frequency programming. What fre frequency are you being fed? I will hope I will hope before they go pull some negative shit out this conversation. They go pull they pull this part of this part of the conversation. At 15 years old I was doing um sound engineering. So I was playing with frequency. I was playing with equalizers. I figured I figured out that hertz is to understand the frequency vibration, right? If I play with those frequencies, right, I can target certain parts of the mind. If I want you to ask to project, or if I want you to go to sleep, or if I want you to go into a meditation. Nigga, yo, I did not know this nigga X was this smart, bro. R.I.P. This nigga smart as hell. That nigga talking about frequencies and shit. The fuck? Let me slow this video down. I need to hear what he's talking about. Of state, I can make my music do that. Have you ever seen those videos of children singing along to a song that may be inappropriate for a younger audience? This this video is so sad, bro. But yo, harping on what X just talked about, bro. Not gonna lie, he's low key spitting. Have you ever listened to like a Playboy Cardi song or like a Destroy Long Lonely song? And that shit sounds so good, but you just, you just get like a dark, eerie feeling to it. Like, you feel me? You're doing something wrong. That's because that's music is made by a nigga who, or, or by niggas who wear upside down crosses. It feels soulless. It just feels like, bro, it sounds good, but it just feels soulless. Like, that opium shit, it feels soulless. It feels like, you feel me, I'm not supposed to be listening to that shit. feel like, you feel me, it feel like I'm g descending down the gates of hell. I don't know. But then you listen to uh, a, uh, a Christian song. You don't know why. You don't know how. But you just feel happy, bro. You feel hopeful. You feel good, you feel me? You can't tell me you ain't been to church on Sunday morning. Even though you feel you, you tired as hell, you really don't want to be there. You listen to that song, you just, you feel me? You, you feel good vibes, man. You you, you want to move your shoulders a little bit. That's because of the frequencies, bro. If you listen to, like, Christian songs or praise music, it the frequency, it just, there's a reason why it makes you feel good. Because the frequencies that are going through your ear go to your brain and, you feel me, gives it good vibes or good dopamine or whatever. I don't know the smart words, to, the terms. But I know how, what it, how it works. That same process happens with, but that same process can be done negatively, and that's what opium is. I'm not finna lie. Like, nigga, naming a group after a drug that kills people is crazy. And niggas listen to that music. I ain't gonna lie. I, mean, I ain't gonna lie. It sound good. It do sound good, but you, like, when you listen, like, have you ever listened to, like, a Ken Carson song, and then, like, after, it's just like, that shit was hard, but, like, I don't know. Something just off about it. That's how I feel listening to Playboy Cardi. That's why I had to, you feel me? That's why, I, like, I be hesitant to listen to him, even though the music be good. I feel like that's, like, a big thing, bro. And uh, last thing, I'm, 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 I'm going to be done yapping after this. I was listening to 3-6 Mafia the other day. No, when I played it for the intro music. I was listening to, listening to the song. And I started thinking about what 3-6 Mafia meant. 3-6 Mafia literally means three sixes. The devil. And when you listen to that song, even though that shit sound good as fuck, it's just something about it that don't feel right. It don't feel right. It don't feel like you're supposed to be listening to that shit. Feel like you participating in some fucking satanic uh, ritual, bro. But the song crank, though. The song crank. I got that same feeling from that Pat, uh, the new Yeet album. I ain't ever got that feeling from any of his songs. This new Yeet album, I got that satanic vibe, bro. Like, okay, it sounds good, but it feels like I'm walking down to the gates of hell, bro. Like, why, why, why do I feel this vibe? Like, it's weird. Like, I don't know. That is, I don't know. 
speaking of the devil, this video right here is a good example. What you're seeing is a form of hypnosis. The frequency of the music impacts the young mind in a way that's not so overt. From the outside, the only thing we're seeing is music being played and children singing and dancing along to it. Seems pretty innocent, right? On a deeper level, however, there's something else going on. Pictures are being painted in the subconscious mind and these are not images that are very productive, especially to children. Everything from the lyrical content to the visuals that appear along with the music to how she's being marketed to the world, Red is a very carefully crafted personality or that's what it feels like to me at least. She's a walking stereotype that's supposed to be a representation of that large group of people. Sexy Red is dead ass a boondocks character. I've said this, I've told my friends this multiple times, bro. She's a boondocks character. If the boondocks were still alive, they, making Sexy Red would be the easiest thing for them. They would just make her how she is in real life into the show. She's literally a stereotype. That's what she is. There's no way she actually acts like that in real life. Nigga, I seen Sexy Red at the uh, DreamCon anime convention. She was over here wearing anime and shit, bro. I honestly think Sexy Red is really a nerd, but she's just playing the street stereotype to make money. Because there's no way she's just that much of a whore. Like, it doesn't make sense, bro. You, How do you find enjoyment of that out of that, bro? being black women of course the question still stands what really is the negative impact of an artist like red and why is it so important that we wake up to the truth about this well for starters red's existence in this industry is for the sole purpose of capitalizing on a false stereotype of an entire race of people. Black Americans have been fighting against pervasive stereotyping for hundreds of years. The world has come very far during this time, but not far enough because figures of similar archetypes have a tendency to gain a lot of popularity in pop culture. Why is the world so attracted to the dysfunction of black people? Why? Can we just question that for a second? According to a Pew Research- Megan Thee Stallion all of a sudden lo loving JJK. Meg Thee Stallion is, ha was a nerd too. Everybody like, yo, if you've done your research about her, which I did because I think I was supposed to make a video talking about her and, like, I think Sexy Red. So I did my research on Meg Thee Stallion. Nigga, she used to be a nerd that got bullied in high school. She's, she's always loved anime. But she's seen a bag opportunity, and now she's a whore. And now she's trying to, like, bring the anime back to kind of, I don't know what she's doing, bro. But it's weird. She's literally a nerd. She was a band kid, man. She was literally, she was literally a band kid. Survey of nearly 5,000 black adults. Black Americans see a range of problems in news coverage of black people. Most of them say that black people are covered more negatively than people in other racial and ethnic groups. Almost two thirds of black adults say news about black people is often more negative than news about other racial and ethnic groups. Only 7% say it's often more positive. The unfair coverage of black Americans in the media is no secret. Stories of violence and abuse often get prioritized in the headlines over positive this is stories. Deep, bro. A destructive pattern that continues to propagate the worst sides of an entire group of people. Pop culture, but- hit. Yo, whoever recommended this video, yo, this is a really good video. Very good video. Pop specifically has been utilized by the corporations to strengthen this image of black people, but more specifically, black Americans for decades. Figures like Red and other artists have been placed in a spotlight to counteract the positive image of the black woman and man. While a very few select individuals, entities, and billion dollar corporations benefit from this narrow and false image they're promoting, the rest of us have to deal with the negatives that come with the propagation of this false image. Red is promoting some very destructive ideologies, both in her music and outside of it, with her actions. With 67% of African American children living in a single parent household, which has been proven to negatively affect the upbringing of the child, Red's music serves as a soundtrack for that family structure which plagues so many black families all over the country. The promotion of baby mama culture and a lifestyle that goes against the formation of the nuclear family isn't something black families need more of. The advocacy of these ideologies and this lifestyle comes with a big monetary incentive. This is one of those something crazy. This is random. The advocacy of these ideologies and this lifestyle comes with a this girl, I'm pretty sure her name's Sasha Obama. Bro, <laughs> apparently she a druggie, man. She like a druggy college kid or like post-college student that does nothing. Like a street saying she a bum, like dead ass. That's what I heard, bro. And like, it's kind of crazy. Like even this was... Even what's supposed to be the staple black family just isn't. Like, it just kind of speaks volume into, like, you feel me? That's Malaya. What, what's, which one uh, is 
Bro, it's one of these girls. I don't know, man. Big monetary incentive. This is why artists like Red are usually the archetype of rappers that receive the most amount of popularity. Becoming popular in rap used to be so much more than who can promote the most vile things on a record. That was until the rise of gangster rap in the 80s, when the major corporations who owned the music realized how they could use it to their advantage. All they had to do was provide black youth with a microphone, a platform, and an incentive to promote negativity to their community. The art form then went from being used as a money. And we as black people sold our own race out for money. But who could blame us? We were struggling. That's what happened, bro. We, back in the 80s, uh, NWA, they, the, they really the ones who started it, bro. NWA. Shit's crazy, man. They promoted gang... Violence, all that, because rap didn't start off like that. Rap just started off as like a way to express ourselves in the hood. And then we got promoted. Uh, once we started making it out the hood, because we started doing good, pushed us right back down. That's what happened, bro. I ain't going to lie. A tool to fight oppression to validating the worst aspects of the black community. Black male rappers have, since the 80s, used the art of rap to sadly not only promote violence against their own kind, but denigrate the women in their community by subjecting them to a sex object, while at the same time celebrating the women who are of a lighter skin complexion. On the other hand, black women suffer as much, if not more, due to the music industry using the female rapper to portray them as voracious sex objects. Red is the perfect model of what we're talking about. It works extremely well with her, specifically because she's proven herself as someone who lacks a moral compass. One of the biggest deciding factors as to whether or not you get put in a position of power is your level of integrity. The less of it you have, the higher probability you'll get selected as one of the many agents of dysfunction. This is why rappers That's like Red seem crazy. That's crazy. What he just said, crazy. Peak game. Nigga basically said, I basically said this before, but he basically said these record labels, like we've been saying this whole video, made white women in those type of music videos seem like queens, you feel me? They wouldn't be shaking their ass. They'd be fully clothed in dresses and shit and standing beside the rapper and the rappers, you feel me, catering to her while the black girls are twerking, you feel me? Throwing ass, yelling and shit, and they basically did that on purpose to continually just broadcast and make people think that's just how things are supposed to be. That's how things are. When back then it wasn't like that, but now it is because they pushed that down our throat so much that now black girls want to be pushing other things down their throat, and these white girls are betrayed as innocent. It's kind of crazy because now. It's actually turning out more and more to be like that. But white girls are, aren't as innocent as niggas think. I ain't gonna lie. I don't, I don't know. Regardlessly gain so much popularity. Despite really, black girls and white girls are the same level of freak. But the only difference is black girls are freaks publicly. And white girls aren't. Only difference. Anything that comes their way. Their success in the industry has already been predetermined with the help of a selection process that evaluates them on a deep level as human beings before they get access to any type of platform. The music industry is a billion dollar industry. I can't afford to give the keys to the people who won't follow suit. The more you're willing to strip away your morals, ethics, and principles, the higher likelihood you'll have an entry to the game. Just take a look at the most popular artists. What percentage of those artists are actually promoting things that are good for the youth? You tell me. Red has already accepted everything that comes with her decision to sell herself and her people out by promoting the worst parts of her community. A big part of this process involves certain rituals that must be done before the benefits come. In Red's case, one of the things she did was leak her own tape to solidify her commitment to the position. This was done in order to connect the dots between the false image of the black woman she's portraying and herself. We also have her dismissing the negative impact of her music on children. Part of the reason why she's been planted as an agent of chaos and dysfunction is so she can infiltrate the minds of young black girls. This is consistent with one of the qualities the music- Bro, do you know what um, embarrassment rituals are? Literally that. It's literally what he just said. Sexy Red leaked her uh, sex tape to show her label that she was about whatever. Nigga, every rapper, every artist has done something like that to show, you feel me, the label. Like, yo, I'm down to be a fucking puppet for you. It's kind of crazy. Humiliation ritual, that's what it's called. Yo, what's some other, yo, chat, what are some other humiliation rituals y'all seen, bro? One to, one that I can think of off my head uh when chris paul this is not even a rapper chris mm, i don't want to say that what's some other humiliation rituals i don't know i can't think of any 
I know there's, I've seen some, but like, can't think of it right now. People think Dre off to his kid to gain popularity. Music industry seeks an artist they put at the forefront. To Lil Uzi Vert? Oh yeah, Uzi uh, saying that everybody's going to hell right with him and all that shit. John Cena, the going uh, onto the stage naked? Yeah. Certain destructive agendas, which is immorality. Those who stand for nothing will fall for Or anything. not not naked, the dress or whatever, the naked shit, whatever. In Red's case, her loyalty is with money and fame and not with her people. We also have the promotional run for her song, F My Baby Dad. As she was getting closer and closer to the birth of her child, Red recorded an unofficial music video in the hospital to her song, F My Baby Dad, which is pretty self-explanatory. A big aspect of branding is adding context to what it is that you're intending to promote. This was her- Oh well, yeah, the fuck, the f yo, the fuck my baby bad, yo. The fuck my baby dad video. That's literally a boondock song, bro. Like, how the fuck? Yo, <laughs> niggas still support her. Uzi Ba, now Uzi just gay. I think y'all niggas need to just accept that, bro. But the uh, him saying that all his fans are going to hell, that's his humiliation ritual for sure. Adding that context, which further capitalizes on the false stereotype she's pushing. Now, despite everything we've talked about so far, the truth of the matter is this. Red is a product of her environment. This is a perspective that highly is in favor of her, and I'm not afraid to vocalize this aspect at all. I may not be a fan of Red, but I can recognize why she appeals so strongly to a lot of people. I still stand by the fact that I don't believe she's a good representation of the black woman. Personally, I hold the opinion that she's the worst representation possible. However, taking all my emotions out of it, she is a black woman and that's something nobody can take away from her ever. She's also a representation of a very large group of women. It's estimated that 14% of the US population of women is black and 7% of the total US population. That accounts to over 20 plus million women. Keep in mind that this is only in the United States. She's also not afraid to take up space. Red, if you guys haven't noticed, is very loud and she's very fierce. These are attributes the average person doesn't naturally carry inside of them. Most of us are afraid of being overtly audacious. But not sexy red. And this is directly connected to one of the primary needs we crave as human beings, which is the need to be accepted. Fear of rejection is the biggest dream killer of all, and it can cripple you, just like how it's crippled a lot of your favorite public figures. This is something that does specifically speak to the black woman on an internal level. Because historically speaking, the black woman had to fight tooth and nail just to get seen and heard. Let's not mention the hundreds of years of putting up with abuse, which is directly interwoven with people not listening to you. And that's something that will shape the rest of your lineage in a certain way. Being forced to build that defense mechanism over a long period of time has certainly something to do with why so many black women cheer red on. At least that's what I think. Because look at it like this. They don't see a person promoting mm. dysfunction when they look at her. They see a melanated woman who comes from St. Louis. Of all places, the murder capital of the United States. It's crazy. Shooting these guns out here, they lost their damn mind. People are fed up with the homicides that seemingly have- St. Louis of all cities is crazy too. Like Memphis, okay, that makes sense. But St. Louis be the murder capital of the country is crazy. And daily now in St. Louis. Basically, I get out and do what I can do and try to get back in safe. Who just like them had all the cards stacked against her on a global stage, making millions of dollars by being herself. If she can run it up by being herself, then that gives us hope that we can do the same. And you know what they say, selling hope is one of the most lucrative business models. Just take a look at motivational speaker, life coach, and author Tony Robbins, who has an estimated net worth of over $600 million. My what? brother in Christ, what? 600 million? Is it exactly that a guy like that sells? Well, it comes back to hope. Hope that one can become the best version of themselves, no matter their current circumstances in life. Hope could serve as one of the most powerful driving forces next to love, which both have the capacity to propel you forward in your life, especially if you need a real life example that shows you the possibilities of what one could accomplish. It's directly connected to the desire of winning in life, which we all have inside of us. Human beings don't usually believe until they see, and red is a very visible example of what it means. 600 milli for saying you can do it is crazy on me chat y'all can do whatever y'all put y'all minds to where the fuck is my 600 million like I, I just said it like what the hell how does he get that much money do i just need to become a motivational speaker bro come on bro to be a success at least in the material world which is the only thing that matters to most people anyway for what it's worth red is a role model to a lot of these women and little girls a lot of times the support that follows the success of another human being isn't always necessarily about what they've done it's about how what they've accomplished is connected to the human being who's watching them succeed what exactly does her success communicate to all these women who are watching her prosper 
That's the million dollar question. Overall, Sexy Red is here to stay. She's only getting bigger by the second and it doesn't look like that's gonna stop anytime soon. Do I think she's a net negative to the genre of hip hop? I will say yes, mostly based on how she shows up as a person. I can tolerate the music because music is subjective after all. The biggest issue I have with Red is the constant lack of character she's exuded. It doesn't seem like she takes her position all that seriously and I think that's where the danger lies. Setting a positive example to the millions of children, more specifically young girls who follow you to your best ability as a public- Man, she don't care about them kids, bro. She done made it very clear. She cares about money and getting money. That's all. And those type of people shouldn't be getting famous, bro. Because what's the use of having a platform if you not finna, like, you feel me, do better with your, for yourself, bro? Like, what the hell? Bigger is the bare minimum if you ask me. With that being said, she's clearly here to run up her bag. So make sure you raise your children and don't leave it up to celebrities because they don't care. Anyway, back like I never left. The dysfunction of sexy red. If you made it this far, drop a like, cuz. Good video, Blackie. I didn't think it was actually going to yo. When a nigga told me to watch a Blackie Speaks video in the big 2024, I thought that shit was going to be ass. Good video, Blackie. Probably one of the better videos I've ever seen on YouTube. I'm not going to lie. Yo.